Pasty Championships. They're being held at the Eden Project in Cornwall. Cornwall's the home of the Cornish Pasty, which won EU legislation as a delicacy from this part of the world. They're open to professionals and amateurs, so we're going to go and try out some of the pasties they have to make. See you with them! <laughs> The first ever World Pasty Championships. Um, we decided we're celebrating the new um, geographic indication of the pasty that they won at the end of last year. I'd like to say we've had the best of old and new Cornish entertainment. So we've had things like the Abba Falogi men who are singing traditional songs, Cornish pub songs, and a lot of young Cornish talents, um, bands, and things like that, so that you can showcase a bit of everything. In order to be a traditional Cornish pasty, the pasty has to be made in Cornwall with traditional methods and ingredients. In order to be a Cornish pasty, it has to have a distinct D shape and it has to be crimped on one side but never on top. Pasties are popular everywhere, so we wanted everyone to feel welcome and to celebrate, but to show them a good time when they got here. So we wanted to give everybody the chance to learn how to make a Cornish pasty. Um, so we've had pasty workshops and demos all day, so anyone that hasn't made one before but likes one can take it away with them. Here we are, <laughs> preparing our own The whole pasty is slow cooked so the flavours are maximised. I'm here outside the judging area. This is preparing all the pasties to go through the two judges. This is the final round. We've got the last 10 minute push. Hopefully this is going to go well. Oh, and we've got a badger one. The quality of, of stuff, I think some of the amateur Cornish ones looked a bit odd, um, but they all tasted great, um, which is the main thing after all. This section they've just done was a sort of open category, which has had roadkill and squirrels and curry and bananas. Do you know what the key ingredients are of a real Cornish pasty? Well, onion, swede, uncooked meat, which is very important, either chunks or minced, and light seasoning. It's a meal, it's a complete meal basically, it's a tradition, it's a heritage to us as well and it, they just taste so good. <laughs> it's a lot of memories. When you sit and have a pasty you remember being a child and things like that. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, they were discovered around 1300. People have been eating them for years. That's, that's a long time. They became massively associated with tin miners in the 18th century, where they were everyday diet material. But wait, they were not like the pasties are today. They, um, they split their pasties in half. So half of your pasty was your main course, your savoury bit, and half of it was your dessert, so the sweet. Mm. Not sure how well that would go together, but that's definitely how they used to eat their pasties. Here we are, minutes before the judges are about to announce their decisions on the World Pasty Championships. Everyone is excited, the atmosphere is tense. Will the squirrel pasty win? Who knows? We'll let you know. I won a, a lovely Cornish pasty wooden trophy. She's the world champion! I've just been reminded that I am actually a world champion. Yes! yes. Oh. Feel the love, feel the love. Great news, uh, not only for Ginters, but the whole industry, because it's great for local farming, local ingredient sourcing, and uh, heightens awareness. Okay, so it's the end of the first World Pasty Championships here at the Eden Project. As you can see, 
It's quite calm now, lovely and serene, and we're enjoying this atmosphere. However, it was not like this earlier today. It's been pretty hectic with between three and a half and four thousand people. Manic! <laughs> a little bit crazy, but um, yeah, it's been a good day. We're off now to rest our pasty-filled tummies, but we'll see you again next year at the World Pasty Championships. Bye! Bye.